Recently, I encountered a problem. I was stuck when I was trying to calculate monthly rolling average that works for financial reporting calendar. In the company where I work, the financial calendar is not the same as the calendar month, which makes things trickier as it makes many time intelligence functions in Power BI non-usable. Things had to be done differently. I scratched my head, did plenty of research online, but couldn't find a solution that meets my need. In the end, I decided to roll up my sleeve and wrote my own tax formula from scratch. It was a roller coaster ride, I got excited, I got confused, the journey was up and down. And in the end, when everything finally came together, it was the best feeling in the world. And I knew that I had to make a video about this so I can share my learning with all of you. Fiscal month are sometimes different from calendar month. Financial month or fiscal month can sometimes be linked to 544 week arrangement, whereby in January we have five weeks, February and March we have four weeks, etc. Therefore, January fiscal month doesn't always finish on the 31st of January. For example, in this table, we have financial month column where one stands for January, two stands for February, and January finishes on the 7th of February for year 2020. When fiscal month is not the same with calendar month, there are some Power BI implications. Firstly, we can't use time intelligence function. For example, year to date, dates in period, etc. We can use them. Secondly, we can't use quick measure for rolling average, which is a hassle. Good news, we found a solution to calculate fiscal month rolling average. As you can see in the chat over here, you can see the monthly PL in gray lines, they are a bit lumpy, up and down, whereas the rolling averages in the blue dotted line, they're smooth. This is why people like rolling averages, because it allows them to see the underlying trend. Is profit down or up or simply flat? What's also really cool about this report is the ability to select a different month of rolling average. For example, I can flip that to six month rolling average, or if you want to, three month rolling average. How cool is this? In this report, I have also included a send check page so we can visualize the numbers and send check the rolling average calculation. Please note, there is a selection over here and I have selected three months rolling average. And three months means in any particular month over here, for example, RA stands for rolling average, I've got 1.1 million rolling average. This 1.1 is the average of the previous three months from month one, two, and three. If you sum all these three numbers divided by three, it should give us 1.1 million. In this report, there is also a column called RAQM, which stands for rolling average quick measure. So this is automatically generated by Power BI, but unfortunately, it only works for calendar month, not for fiscal reporting month. This is our data model, which is relatively simple. One to many relationship from date, cost center, and GL dimension tables to our actual table, as well as two major tables over here. Let's look at our measures. We have number of months, which is just three, which is an input. We have PNL, which is just a sum of value in the actual tables. We have rolling average tax, which I will explain in details later, as well as rolling average from quick measure, which is auto generated by Power BI. I mentioned earlier this doesn't work, but if your financial month is the same as calendar month, this can work and rather than writing this from scratch you can auto generate this using quick measure feature of power bi and all you need to do is practically click this icon in measure tools and then quick measure window will come up and then calculations select calculation scroll down to time intelligence and then you get to select rolling average and then over here all you need to do is just click and drag so if you want to calculate the pnl rolling average just click the pnl drag it there 
And for date, you just need to tell Power BI which is your date column. And I'm just going to click and drag. And then after that, there is questions about your rolling average. Is that by day, by month, by quarter? So if you want it by month, then you just select month. And then it's asking period before, period after. So for example, if you want your rolling average to be all before January, then you do rolling period before say for example three months and after is zero month but if you want it to be before and after it means that if you're in january you want december january and february that way then you put maybe one before and one after so for now i am just going to select three periods before and then i'm going to hit add when you do that a new measure called PNL rolling average is automatically generated. This is from Power BI Quick Measure, basically. This will work if you want to calculate rolling average by calendar month. But as you can see, there is an error message in here that says time intelligence quick measure can only be grouped or filtered by Power BI provided date hierarchy or primary date column. How to check if this is working? Click the report view, insert a new page, insert a table, and then bring dates and just show year and month. And then drag the PL and the rolling average. And you can see from here that Power BI can create rolling average, which is the average of these three months being shown over here, and then that three months being shown over there. It is working when we are using date hierarchy, but the moment we want to use a different hierarchy, I'm just copying the table and I'm changing that. If we are using our financial month and financial year, just clicking down summarize, it doesn't work. It is blank because as stated in the DAX, time intelligence quick measure can only be grouped or filtered by Power BI provided date hierarchy or primary date column, which is why it is blank when we are putting our own hierarchy. And this is why I have decided to write my own measure called rolling average. Before we get started to take a deep dive on our DAX formula, there are a couple of prerequisites that we need to take care of. Firstly, we need to have a date table customized with financial year and financial month. Secondly, we need to add a financial month counter in the date table. This is a column that is an index counter of the financial month. It starts with one for the first financial month in your date table, and then moving up to two for the second financial month, three, four, until 12, and then instead of resetting to one for January financial month, the counter should go up to 13, 14, 15, etc. Some of you may be thinking, how do we create a date table with financial month and financial month counter? I did it in Excel, let me show you. I have a column for dates and I have the purple columns which are all fiscal period, financial week, financial month, quarter and year. And I just set it up according to what I need. In this instance, my January finishes on the 7th of February. And therefore, my February financial month starts on the 8th. And my counter, my counter is just a formula that I've written in Excel. It says, if there is a change in this row versus previous row, then add one. If not, keep it the same as previous row counter. So as you can see, it's just the same formula that I double click down. And if you scroll down to the very bottom or somewhere in the middle, when there is a change in financial year, have a look, 12, is December and then when it becomes January, my counter continue to 13. Now that we have finished the preparation of our date table, let's take a closer look at our rolling average DAX measures. This is the rolling average DAX that I have written and I have split my DAX into two parts, 
Part 1 is the section where we are defining the rolling average window. How many financial months shall we use in the rolling average calculation? Is it 3 months, 12 months, etc. In this instance, I have chosen to use selected value from a parameter table p-values field. This is optional. If you want, we can overwrite this with just 12 for 12 months or 3 for 3 months. We don't have to use parameter table. But I have done this so that it is more user-friendly for the user who uses the information because by using selected value from parameter table, we can make the report more interactive. For example, over here, we allow the user to select whatever month. And this visualization in here is using p-values and the p-values came from parameter underscore RAM table over here. And to select what the user has pick in here, in our DAX, we need to write number of month is equal to selected value from parameter underscore RAM p-values. The next input that we need is for any given date filter context, what's the last date? To derive the last date, all we need to do is declare a variable last current date and then type in equal max the date field from the date table. What does it mean? It means that if the filter context is year 2022, for example, the last date will be the 31st of December 2022. If the filter context is January 2021, then the last date will be the maximum date in the fiscal period January 2021. The next input that we need is what's the financial month counter associated with the last date? I'm declaring it over here. I'm calling it last month counter. And we can use calculate to sum the financial month counter field from the date table where the date is equal to last current date. Next, we want to identify the financial month counter associated with the first date. And to do that, we declare first month counter variable, type equal, last month counter, less number of months, plus one. Now that we have completed part one, where we have told Power BI, hey, we need to calculate rolling average for X month. And then this is the last date associated with the current filter context. And then this is the last month counter and the first month counter associated with that rolling average window. Once everything has been defined, let's move on to the second part, which is the calculation of the rolling average. To calculate the rolling average DAX measure, we need to use a combination of calculate and average X as well as two filter inputs. The first input to our calculate function is an expression using average X. At this stage, some of you may be thinking, why use average X? Why not use average? Average X is way more powerful than average. Average DAX formula can only take an input, which is a column name. It cannot take an input which is a measure, such as our PNL measure. In our situation, PNL is not a column, PNL is a measure. Just remember to calculate an average of a measure, we need to use average X. When we're using average X in Power BI, we are essentially telling Power BI, please calculate an average and use two sets of inputs. What measures are we averaging and what do we want to average it by? Use this syntax. Average X open bracket values open bracket and in here enter the field that we want Power BI to calculate the average by these values. For example, we want to calculate the average by financial month. Therefore, we put financial month over here. If we want it to be the average by financial year, then we put F year counter in here instead of F month counter. And then the next input over here is the measures that will need to be average. In this instance, we want to calculate the average of PNL profit and loss, therefore we enter PNL in here. 
our next inputs are the filter criteria. The first one is to remove the filter context, the date filter context. And then the second one is to reapply a new date filter context, which is our rolling average windows, which need to be in between the first month counter and the last month counter. So now you know how to create rolling average measures that we can use to produce these beautiful charts over here, as well as use it in the visualization of our cards over here. And one last thing that I'm going to show you is how to make the rolling calculation dynamic using the drop-down box over here. In this section, I will show you how to create a parameter input so that the user can select what type of monthly averages for Power BI to calculate using a drop-down box. To recreate this rolling average monthly input, this is what you need to do. Click Report View, click Modeling, click New Parameter, Numeric Range, and then enter number 1 until number 12, which represent month 1 until month 12 with an increment of 1 and then hit create. Once you have done that, notice this, a new parameter table is created as well as something over here. Yes, we have a slicer automatically created. Now this slicer at the moment, you can drag this slicer so you can leave it like that if you want or you can reformat it into a drop down box which i like just like that and this is what you can do you can click format your visual slice the settings change the style into drop down and once you have done that just move it up a little bit make it smaller and then you can call it rolling average month if you want to just double click Let's differentiate that by making it shorter and then you can select. Yeah. But this is not yet linked. Yeah. So how to link it? I'm going to show you now. Let's delete the original first and then move it up and look at that. It's currently broken. Yeah. Now, how do we fix it up? Go back to our rolling average measures and in here, number of month is currently coming from selected value parameter RAM p-values, yeah? but we have removed the slicer, so it's no longer there. So now we need to link it up to the newly created one, which is that parameter value. So let's delete that and relink it to our new one, which is that one. And click that. And look at that, it is back on there. So let's just check that. That's done. Now that's working nicely. If you like the content of this video, please give me a thumbs up and also feel free to leave some comments and suggestions for future improvement. And also please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss out on the fun of learning DEX and Power BI so you can be more confident in creating insights from your data in your day-to-day -day life. See you next time.